Okay, so here's some more of the lies that NASA says. Uh, I'm here at the Woody Museum, and they've got a representation of, uh, they've got a set up here, and they're, they're inferring that it's the Hubble and how they see star fields. And uh, that's actually a decent uh, thing, but the problem is what they call the Hubble telescope is not this. This is the actual Hubble telescope. It's called SOFIA. And it's the, you, can, you can look it up. It, uh, NASA has this plane and there, this is it. And it goes up and, the, and where, where you see the, uh, the opening there, it actually goes up to 45,000 feet. And uh, there's a guy online that you can that you can find named Robert Paisano, and uh, he was running an AI program to find artificial intelligence, and he was trying to find uh, use the uh, Hubble images to scan the background. It was kind of like his own version of SETI, but he was trying to look for intelligent uh, signals uh, optically using Hubble images. So he contacted a NASA employee. Again, his name is Robert Paisano, who's a postgraduate student at somewhere in California. You'll have to look it up. But uh, finally the NASA, uh, he, he, and he and he records the uh, conversation he had with a guy and it's on YouTube. And uh, the guy finally admits that all the Hubble pictures are actually from Sophia. Now that, that, that plane that I showed you can be loaded with seven or eight different kinds of telescopes. Uh, infrared, near-infrared, optics. Uh, there's, there's several things it measures, and what it does, it goes up to 45,000 feet. Now, that's a lot higher than a normal cruising altitude for a plane. And obviously, it'll go up mainly at night to get the optics. Or it can get... It can, uh, but that's your Hubble. There is no Hubble telescope here. You may remember that, uh, remember when Hubble first went up, they said it was near side and they had to go up and correct it. The reason being, everybody wanted them to go take pictures of the, uh, the stuff on the moon, the Apollo landers. And there's, there are no, none of that stuff's actually on the moon. We didn't ever went to the moon. But they said, well, we can't do that because it's uh, it's too close, and there's a there's a flaw in the uh, optics, and it's you know it can only see stuff real far away. So they started coming up, and they made up this excuse about, uh, and they said, well, we concentrated on this one uh, spot uh, because it's uh, you know it can't see near, but it can see far even better than we planned. We're going to concentrate on stuff, and they they just put out all this CGI stuff like this. All this this is just CGI. Some of it's just paintings. Uh, but the uh, that was their excuse at the time. Uh, another excuse I want to cover real quick that I get from people is well, we you know they have a they have this reflector on the moon, and uh, what's your answer to that? You can fire a laser at the moon and it comes back. How do you explain that? Well, if you look up National Geographic, in the early '60s they were firing lasers off the moon. And uh, it's in National Geographic. Don't if you don't believe me. So they, what they, supposedly there's a 10 foot reflector on the moon, and if you have the coordinates, you can fire fire it a laser off and it'll bounce back. Well, the the truth is you can fire you can bounce a laser off the moon if you have a power powerful enough one and you just uh, hit it at the right angle. Some of it's going to come back, and that's what you're getting. Because uh, think about this. Uh, I'm going to use their numbers for this. So that's a 10 by 10 reflector on the moon. And uh, if you're on the Earth, if you're at the equator, it's moving a thousand miles an hour. Well, if you're up here and it's rotating as they say it is, you would stand up here and it would take you all day to turn around once. Yet here it's going a thousand miles an hour. So if you're here firing the laser, you're going to have to figure out the difference. You're gonna have to figure out how fast you're going on the earth 
Well, no, you don't, because the speed of light is, you know, you can just fire and it's almost instantaneous. Almost is not instantaneously. Now, remember the listing of there, uh, you know, the moon comes in and out. Uh, the average distance is about 237,000 miles. Light travels at 186,000 miles a second. So you've got, depending on where you are, you're gonna have to calculate, it would probably take a Cray supercomputer to hit that. And you probably still wouldn't hit it because you'd have to have, you'd have, to have months of pre-planning to, to get the, the measurement right. And it's a 10, it's a 10 by 10 foot uh, aluminum reflector. So you're firing the thing at 186,000 miles a second. It takes a little over a second and a half to get there. Now, if you're the further up you are, the slower it is, the further down you are, the faster it is. So if you're in, let's say you're in uh, uh, UCLA and firing at that to prove to your students you're actually just bouncing the lasers off the moon and convincing yourself that it's hitting that aluminum target when it's actually just bouncing off the moon, just like they did in the 60s. Uh, you wouldn't be able to hit it. There's no way. There is literally no way you could hit a 10 by 10 target on a planet that's spinning, even like I said here, at 750 miles an hour, you're firing 237,000 miles, and there's a second lag. Think about it. That thing's moving, uh, that you, you, you'd never hit it. So the, the laser refraction from the moon, from the, uh, from the aluminum reflector there is just bogus. You can bounce lasers off the moon without even hitting that thing. It'll just bounce off. Look up National Geographic, them bouncing lasers off the moon. Thank you, I'm out.